Okay. Kushan, I guess we are, um, we we'll just wait for a few seconds and then we'll start. We see all the attendees coming in. Just give me a second. Of course. Okay, uh, Gulshan, if you are ready, then we will start. Okay, uh, we got people on board. So let me quickly introduce. So hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar. I am Pratesh Patel from Basecamp Digital. Before I talk about today's topic, I request all the participants to please post their questions in a Q&A sections only. Uh, to our today's topic is very interesting. How to make OTD work for your business? This question is in mind of many advertisers, be it big or small. So let me quickly introduce to our guest and our dear friend, Gulshan Verma. Gulshan is a digital media expert with a rich experience of over 16 years in the industry. Currently, Gulshan had client and agency revenue at Hotstar, India's leading premium streaming platform. Prior to Hotstar, Gulshan was the CRO at the Times Internet Limited. He has also worked with marquee brands like Outbrain, uh, Pony Media, Yahoo India at the senior level in India and abroad. Academically, Gulshan has an MBA from Kellogg School of Management, a Master's in Political Economy and a BSc Economics from the London School of Economics and holds two patents in search monetization. So over to you, Gulshan. Uh, thank you, Pradesh, and uh, hope everybody and you are doing well out there. It's, uh, I know, a tough time in uh, out there, uh, but uh, I think we're getting used to what people call the new normal. Okay. Um, in terms of structure, my suggestion is, and um, you know, is that we should do about 25, 30 minutes of you know a presentation, and then I'm happy to open up to answer questions about this topic or any other topic that you may have. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, broadly speaking, I understand that most of you who joined, mo most of you who joined, are. Um, are, um, uh, are fairly comfortable with the digital the, with the digital piece, okay? So therefore, we I, I won't go into so, too much details about this piece, but uh, let me share my screen and then I will talk a bit about what OTT is and then we can get into the details. Sure. Okay. You know, I think the question comes up is what is OTT? Um, and what I'm basically saying right now it is a way of reaching typically premium video content. So stuff that you would see on TV, stuff that you would see that's produced by, by a commercial outfit, okay? Um, you know, on a platform or on an app or some people log in by a connected TV app on their smart TV. And that's really what it is. And I think since the last two or three years, we've seen that as India's become a very high 4G market, our user base has grown very, very rapidly. Um, so that's probably what it is. It's not the same as any online video. Typically, we only uh, show content that is brand safe or produced by us, so it doesn't mean we can vouch for, versus an online video aggregator that would uh, allow anybody to show any video. So we generally look at those things as slightly separate. Sorry, but, sorry, uh, we'll turn to uh, interrupt you, but I guess we're getting a lot of requests. From, you can speak a bit further, please. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I think number one is the questions we started getting about almost two months ago now is it's a tough time. Um, we have cash flow, employees are at home. Should we be selling? What should we say? How should we say it? Um, I don't even know what creator to produce, for example. Um, those are all questions that we started getting from our clients. And um, ultimately this deck was built around to help answer that, that question and observations that we were seeing from the market. We're now two months into this lockdown. So, and as we start to slowly come out of it, I think the lessons are still fairly important for uh, an environment like this. Um, so I'm just gonna go over very quickly three areas. I think one is 
what are we seeing in the industry? Okay, this is not just about Hotstar, but other pieces as well. Um, what are our recommendations? And these are guidelines and thoughts that you can adapt and share with your clients, or you know, you may want to use it for your own marketing departments. And then, thirdly, I would quickly go through two or three examples of clients that we have worked with to show what can be done. Okay, Pratesh, make sense? Anything else you want to add in? No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, quickly going through this. I don't think this is new, but ultimately what we've seen right now is that pretty much 40%, um, 95%, 97% of our users who are watching on Hotstar continue to watch on Hotstar. So that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. What we have seen is that compared to pre-COVID times and you know, part two and part, you know, week two and week three, we've seen a significant increase in the time spent people are watching. Okay. So from about three and a half hours a day when they came in per week, sorry, three and a half hours per week, we've actually touching almost four hours a weekly, mostly on smartphones, but we're seeing a big uptake on connected TVs as well. Okay. Okay. So the question is what has changed and also in terms of, um, how people are doing this. And by the way, this is not Hotstar data. This is actually uh, from Bart Nielsen. So this is actually can be applied across the industry. And I would typically see that we are seeing people watch news in the morning between 8 to 10 a.m. Okay. It kind of jumps up, goes up to a certain level, and then kind of follows through. Then typically, if you look at gaming or VOD, which is what we call video on demand, it starts rapidly rising roughly around, uh, around 12 o'clock. And it used to be that we used to talk about video being, you know, six to 10. But actually what we see right now is that from 12 o'clock onwards, pretty much users are on watching videos, playing games and on social networks all the way through till 10. Okay. 10, maybe 12 o'clock. So what you're seeing right now is at any one point in time. Okay you are seeing basically more than 10% of users are our daily user base online, pretty much all the way through. And that is a new phenomenon. Okay. Um, and then the good news is, is that what they're watching seems to be pretty interesting. Again, this is not from our own data. This is actually from Bart Nielsen. What we are seeing right now, and again, forget the plug, but that's where it is. Um, what are they watching? I see they're watching news. I see they're watching, you know, Money Heist on Netflix. Some of the traditional shows that we've launched, uh, Big Boss and Boots is also important as well. So what we see right now is actually, and if you look in the, and this data is about a month old right now, but in the first week, okay, there's a huge dependency on television as uh, news. And then what we also see is there's actually quite an interesting focus on um, historical and, you know, mythological shows. So Mahabharata became very, very important and very popular uh, across. And I think in these tough times, at least my takeaway right now is that um, people like to go back to things that they understand they know well. Okay. And so actually the top three shows on Hotstar in that period were actually all mythological. Uh, Mahabharata, you know, uh, Ramayan, all those things also came in. Okay. And then on movies, again, what we see is, and it's a very general statement. What you're seeing is comedy, family shows seem to be working quite well. Okay. Again, this is, in, this is external data. Okay. Um, what you see was that also in the middle of this piece, people started looking for different brands. They wanted to see what options they had to entertain themselves, whether it was Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus Hotstar, Boo, Z5, Sony. They were all there. Um, and as you can see, if you think about news, all of a sudden, and this is a daily chart comparing the month before the lockdown to the period during the lockdown. Uh, this is our own internal data. Our watch time surged very rapidly over where it was previously. I, bought, I talked about this previously. What we saw was interesting in terms of what people were watching. Again, stuff that you can watch with a family. Very interesting things. We saw a 75% increase in watch time on Mahabharata. News viewership grew by more than eight, eight X. 
So this makes sense, right? I'm stuck at home. I want to know what's happening. I'll watch news. Okay. I also want in a very stressful time to understand stories that I feel comfortable with and that relate to me. And that's where mythological becomes super important. Okay. We talked a bit about the time bands. I won't go into that kind of more detail. Um, what we're also seeing, frankly, is a huge uh, increase in people now watching television uh, OTTs on their, on their apps, connected TV apps. In fact, actually, it's almost doubled in the last month okay, of our growth in uh, watch time. So if I'm thinking as a marketer, I'm not only thinking about how to reach people on the mobile phone, I'm also really thinking about how they watch on large TVs. Okay. Um, I won't go into this. Um, I'm more than happy to share this offline um, if people want it. Do let us know, we can get it sent out. Okay. Um, then what we ended up doing is actually we have uh, our own internal insight team. Okay. And we started looking at this advertisers and, and what are they doing? And what we saw is that actually 70% of brands continue to advertise. Okay. So while if you look at pre-COVID, you know, this is more of a bark meals and kind of insight level conversation. We saw about 1400 advertisers active on television and digital, okay, in the video space. But if you actually look at it, most people continued for the first week to 10 days, which I think was unusual. And they may have gone slightly differently. Okay. And then we started asking some of our consumers, okay, what do you think of these people who are advertising these times? And what we found out through our own internal social media unit called Start the Distillery is that nine out of 10 users approved of brands who were being relevant to these times and showed solidarity with the, with the consumers in the times they were going through. And 65% approved of normal advertising. And normal in this case is those who are advertising a product, a solution, a sale, okay? Things that you would do that's you know, not so different to what you normally do within, uh, with, with outside of a, of a lockdown. So that was some context in terms of what we were seeing. Um, what but we all I, I'm sorry to cut, but just if on the on the if you can go back on that slide, I have a few questions. I mean, I have one sure. question. So these are the advertisers you're saying later on they continued, but then I just want to know were the new advertisers or the same kind of advertisers who continued? I mean, did anybody jump in the opportunity because there is less? less uh, number of advertisers advertising. So there was an opportunity for a lot of non-advertising to start coming in or other team advertisers? Actually, it was interesting. So um, I don't think there was a lot of brand new advertisers. Um, a couple of insights that we did take away was that there were a couple of advertisers that took advantage of, uh, of two phenomena. And we'll go into more into it later on. I think the first one was I'm at home, so therefore I am more likely to consume my product. Okay, that could be ourselves, like media entertainment, that could be hygiene, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the second thing we also saw was that because we were in a big supply shock, okay, as an example, you couldn't get product X or product Y, the challenger brands saw an opportunity to say, okay, fine, maybe my product, maybe the leading market product is not available, but my product is also there as well. And exactly. so maybe, yeah. and maybe and some of those took advantage. I've got an example a bit later on. Okay. So there were two examples that we were seeing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I've got an example. Um, what we did see also in this time as well is that um, at brands who advertise saw increased search interest. Uh, and the example that we're using here right now, and this is the example we're talking about, is um, MDH Masala and Rajesh Masala. Okay. Um, if you look at it, you know, what you saw was that Rajesh Masala is not the market leader, but as they started to advertise, advertise, their search results started to go up. The comments started to go up as well in search. And maybe because there's less advertising overall, they were able to break, break through the clutter in a, in a, in a less, with, with, less, uh, with less spend. Okay, that was an opportunity. Okay. Um, a lot of brands started talking about topical content. This is again the second point, which is consumers were pretty happy with the idea of people that talked about uh, solidarity in these times. So the example that we have here is Fevicol, for example. Fevicol is obviously a hundred year plus brand. Okay, it changed its logo slightly from being you know tied two elephants tied together to two elephants working still together but slightly apart. 
Okay, Tech Mahindra changed its logo. Again, these are not advertising related conversations. These are all uh, about how you communicate. Okay, and then the point that I was making, which is you know, people who talk about positive, uplifting messages. Asian Paints, I thought was interesting. They actually played some of their old ads out again. Okay, from 10, 15, 20 years ago. And people started remembering those and thinking about the good times previously. Okay, so these are all the kind of ideas that we started seeing. Uh, Pratesh, you'll have to let me know if there's any questions because um, I'm not able to see the, the question. No, so we are, we are getting questions, but what I'll do is maybe you can complete and in between it, I feel I can, I have some question, I'll definitely jump in, but then we are getting a lot of questions in QA, we'll start getting it. Okay. So once you're done with the session, we'll start with the question and answer. Okay, got it. All right. Okay. So again, these are two or three different ideas. And again, I'm, not, I'm talking more about marketing than I'm talking about media buying. Okay. Uh, Amul, for example. Um, it started running its, its ads during Ramayan, okay? And the search interest just jumped up a lot. Lifebuoy, a relevant product at this time, upswing in searches, okay? And by the way, who really searches for, for soap? But, you know, there were different messages in terms of how to wash their hands. You know, brands that are relevant can do things that are pretty interesting, okay? And I think what, what my takeaway right now is that, you know, marketing is not just about when I have something to sell. It's about a communication, it's about an action, okay? And so, recommendation is yes, don't go with what you were doing before, modify messaging and make bold choices. I think ultimately, understand these times, social relevance, things that help the consumers, people remember that. Nostalgia was something that, you know, when you look back at it, you think that's a fairly easy topic to talk about. Obviously, in these times, people wanna go back to nostalgia, okay? Um, but, okay? But, um, yes, yes, okay. But, uh, um, you know, I don't think anyone going into April thought that brands would talk about, you know, ads, you know, Amo would bring up its old, uh, Asian Paints would bring up its old ads again. But it worked. And obviously, topical marketing. Um, we get a lot of questions right now on terms of creatives. How do I shoot? How do I shoot a video? I didn't even know what to do. Can you help me, et cetera, okay? They were doing showcase videos, they were doing home shot videos, they started using influencers a lot. Um, all these things can be done, and even we've done our own versions of that. Okay. Um, I'll just give you some community examples. Um, Red Label, as an example, is an ad that ran. Okay. It talked its old ad, which talked about the immunity boosting benefit of their natural uh, tea brand. Okay. Ariel started talking about, again, being relevant, share the load. This is an ad they'd run, I think about six months ago, around uh, Women's Day or Mother's Day, okay? And now they're coming back and saying, then they were all locked in. It's not just about, you know, the wife doing all the work, I could also help out as well. Again, that connect between what the times you're talking about and where you are is fairly important, okay? Um, how can I help? Okay, Metropolis, fairly obvious example. Bajaj Alliance, talking about the benefits. If you don't have cash, this can help you today because it's your cashless medical insurance. Do everything online, etc., can be done. Um, again, being topical, VIX is helping to do that. Uh, Dettol, very meaningful brands, but they, they, they help you learn how to wash your hands, how to stay safe, how to be uh, healthy. Okay? And then even if you don't have that, solidarity. Tide was talking about how to support healthcare across India all the way through, okay? And then again, uh, this is an example that we actually did for Kellogg's, okay? Where we actually had some of the actors and actresses uh, from our shows do their uh, ads from home. So this uh, character was actually, she shot it in her own house herself, okay? With Kellogg's, that actually is her brother there who was playing the part of the little boy eating the, eating the cereal. And again, if I'm watching these content, these shows, this makes a lot of interest to, to us, okay? And this is all done remotely, okay? We got the video, we organized the shoot, we sent over the camera, it came back, we did the edit, we did the show, we overlay the, the, the effects and done within a two day period. Interesting work, all done on phones and cameras. Okay, um, and you know, I'll get past this, but fundamentally, at least that's what I wanted to talk about. I think that 
there's always a tendency in times like this to um, stop. What will people say if I continue to advertise? What should I do? I don't know what to say. But there's actually an interesting need. People want to know what's familiar. People want to know how brands can help them. Okay? And if that helps, then this is what you can do. That's pretty much what I wanted to say. Pratesh, make sense? Any questions? Any thoughts? Yes, we we got, we started getting a lot of questions. Uh, from I also have a lot of questions. So, Gulshan, you very rightly you mentioned about that example of masala, right? So, somewhere I feel a lot of non-brand, right? Because in times of essential, when you call up the grocery guy and you ask for an XYZ brand of Atta, and you ended up, they say that we don't have that branded. I mean, and the next thing everybody said is no problem, whatever you have, just send it. And I have seen it in my household and my friend's household. What has happened is they have actually gone to a non known brand to a from a very big known brand, right? In terms of art. Because they did a trial because it was not available. And now that is the direct shift. So I am not really so what's your view? Because I'm not really seeing those kind of advertisers started advertising in a big way doing this thing. Right? Because there are like uh, Ata, I have three other brands over and above the ITC, right? I have salt, I, that is Zil Salt, I never heard of it. But those are the, there are various such brands, and somewhere we feel that they are not really taking advantage by right, coming on to advertise. And the second question is, is there an issue? So like you rightly said, right? So the biggest issue is creative. A lot of these brands are not even aware in terms of how much time they spend on video at peak on OTT or anywhere. So what do you think? Uh, how have you guys also seen that reach out to those guys and do you think they are missing out to us or you have a sort of package base to reach out to those audience, those advertisers? Yeah, I think you're right, which is I haven't seen many brands that have taken advantage of the fact that, you know, my market leader is only able to you know, do half of what they were doing before. So there's potentially half the market up for grabs. Um, this is an example that we found with Rajesh Masala. I think it's a smart thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do. People want Atta, people want Masala. In my case, you know, my kids like a certain brand of noodles. It wasn't available for 10 days at a time. Okay. Then we came back and we bought a different brand and they, they were fine with it. So that trial and that, you know, that we used to call about that idea to the, the need to trial. Okay. That is easier to get over now because your competition is not on every shelf anymore. Your competition is not this. You just need to be able to be aware of it. Okay. Exactly. And there is less clutter, right? So there's a good opportunity to yeah, advertise. And, and, at least, and at least for what we saw, we saw some new brands come on to us who not many, but to be very frank, but some brands who said, look, I want to test this, but I don't have the ability to go on television. But OTT is something I can do because I can target, I can find people in my market, etc." Got it. So uh, I'm getting questions. I'll read out. There are a lot of questions coming in. So I'm going to read out one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question which comes to me is, are traditional medium such as cable, DTH, under threat after the rise of OTT? I'm sure you must be getting this often. How it will impact the traditional marketing on television? See, I would still say that, and I'm, again, I work with, I'm a part of a large media company, so there is some, there is value in television, and there's value in the big screen. Um, I think today TV cannot hit the scale, OTT cannot even together hit the, hit the scale of uh, a large uh, GEC channel. Okay? And typically people who watch television watch four hours a day, at least 50% watch TV every other day. That scale is important. I think where OTT is becoming interesting is there are some users who, for example, are moving away from large TVs and cannot be reached with that same level of frequency just by TV. Okay. So typically I think a good example would be people who watch English news or watch English uh, shows. Okay. We generally tend to use that as a shorthand for people who are sort of more global, maybe potentially higher income. Okay. Those are audiences that we see a lot of on OTT right now. Okay. Um, and the question is how to, how, how to take advantage of that. Um, you know, my view right now is very simple, which is there are users you'll find on TV, there are users you'll find on, on OTT, and they have different use cases. Okay. Um, and they have different responses. And you have to think about what that, what that is. Got it. So there is a, another, you can hear me clearly, right? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, perfect. So uh, during this lockdown, obviously, have you seen the subscription number increasing drastically 
and if that how much percentage have you seen in those subscription based increasing see um that's not something that i can really talk about publicly um, yeah. i think we've announced recently what our subscriber base is um in the press and you can more than happy to look that up um you know i think you know very frankly i think different otts have different um benefits and strengths okay so for example um we're we we're, we're very well known for our sports and you know unfortunately sports is not active right now hopefully in the next 3 to 6 months it will come back and i think those users obviously are looking for something different but at the same point in time we had uh, a, we launched disney plus actually this is really interesting we launched disney plus in the middle of a lockdown we actually had a debate yeah it was a, yeah. A, it was actually a biggest brand launch for the last 3 years and there was a debate that we had internally that said at this time is it the right thing to do to launch it will you be able to make the noise will you be able to make you know reach the kind of audiences that you want to reach okay uh, how would you even reach that and i think we took the call that it was the right thing to do um we leveraged influencers on social media we leveraged our own media network inventory we leveraged our ott and let you know what the new kind of shows it was the lion king we did a live show uh streaming with social influencers we would chat along and follow they started watching you know Disney plus hot stuff and that was all something we did working offline working from home in a 4 to 5 you know a one week period of time that's the kind of thing that you can do and our reach was pretty high all the way through um and i think we've seen we're pretty happy with the success we've seen there got it uh, one very interesting way how, how can a b2b company benefit from ott platforms uh it's kind of interesting i also see like um like the traditional example what's a b2b company is intel okay nobody buys the computer chips okay but somehow intel managed to brand its chips as the right thing to do intel inside campaigns okay right. so i think one hand if i'm selling a product that will ultimately fit inside somebody else's end consumer I think you can build a differentiation strategy. Okay? If you think about like I a lot of places have Havels. Okay? Most wires and houses are built um by the builder. Okay? That's pretty much where it is, okay? Um but somehow they've seen big success in showing that a house is safe because their wires are safe. Okay? So even in the B2B world, I'm looking at products specifically I would talk about services later on. Um if you're depending on influencers okay to sell your product okay as an example mobile phones uh oil you will always need to have built a consumer strategy i don't think that every, totally everything is b2c i think the question is who you reach out to i think where we offer for example on hotstar is that we offer the ability to reach people by email address and phone number targeting that's something that we found pretty helpful that if you're not trying to reach out to everybody but you really want to reach out to certain audiences we have behavioral targeting and we have custom audiences that allow you to do your video ads specifically on uh hotstar to a specific user base now obviously we have to wait and see what the audience is and you know, there still needs to be a large enough number but i think that's something that i think is pretty important so oh, interesting so you're saying that you provide custom audience. so either i need an email id or a phone number that's it Gen- generally i mean my recommendation is not email id so much i think phone numbers become the most important like collection point what mm-hmm. i would say is also that this is a private you know so we have a a privacy guaranteed kind of like a uh, um uh, tool so we don't get access to your phone numbers you don't get access to ours we just do a matching offline and we run those ads okay simple as that based phone numbers i think that's that's a strong difference between let's say us and an online video aggregator which is we know a lot about the consumers because the consumers generally paying for the content or register whereas generally on most video aggregators they don't <laughs> interesting and do do you provide based on custom or something as a look like audience is that also available on your platform yes we do um we've looked at that um i think it's early days for us in terms of look like but as we've seen some pretty good reactions to it interesting okay so i'll go to the next question it says uh, currently which is the best best segment that uh, a advertiser can use to target on ott um what well, i think i'll just make sure i answer that question what i think you're saying is 
which audience is the most attractive on OTT. That's right. That's good. Yes. Um, I think I don't have a great answer to that. I think the question is compared to what, and the answer will be different for every single different advertiser or every different client. Okay. Um, I think what we do do, like we do, like digital does well, is the ability to do not just um, targeting in terms of age, demo, you know, interest, phone number, but also by sequential storytelling. So you can actually do a user and say, show them three ads, first show the first ad, show the second ad. So you actually do those kind of activities. So, you know, depending on who you are, I think you can leverage a lot of different tools to, to do that. So I don't have a great answer. I obviously think that everyone should be on OTT advertising because I think that's a new thing. But um, I don't think there's one specific audience that, that is there. I do think that on average, we, we over-index on more younger audiences compared to TV. Okay. Okay. So uh, do you see an upsurge in some brand sales due to advertising or, uh, or due to uh, convenience? It's um, an upsurge in uh, some brand sales due to advertising or due to convenience. Okay. So you're saying, are you saying basically it's upsurge in sales is due to advertising or due to convenience, right? Right now I cannot go, whatever it's available, I just buy it. It's because of that. Um, I think what is advertising trying to do? Advertising is trying to change your habits or build a new habit. Okay. And um, I think the question really is, is I may buy, you know, spice powder X or spice powder Y. But I should feel good about it. I should feel comfortable that it is. I think if I'm buying some kind of, of art and I don't feel like it's good enough, then I will probably not go back, back to buy it. My alternatives come back again. So in my view, personally, they both kind of work together. No matter how hungry I feel, I will probably not buy the same noodles, instant noodles, if, I don't, if I'm not comfortable that it's safe for my, for my family. Okay. There's a certain amount that it does. So I think advertising does a bit of both. And it also helps you reinforce the activity that you may have already done. Yeah, and, and that was a very interesting question. The reason is because a lot of time brand says, right, in this current situation, anyway, they're going to buy my product because it's available and that's the only product available. So I don't need to advertise. But technically what you said is right. You need to advertise also along with even if your brand is available and there is no other option. But still, it's always good to be in top of mind, especially all the brands which are not a, bro a known brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let me take another one. Is there any specific guidelines creative agencies can follow in order to ensure the advertising works on OTT? So I think there's two, I think, you know, and I'll answer that question too specifically. Um, I think the biggest difference that we talk about in OTT versus, and the question is compared to television or compared to Hotstar. Uh, compared to another online video aggregator. Uh, I think the first thing is that we really don't do skippable ads because I think we believe that it's important to have a 30 second story. Okay. There are some cases where we have, we, we are doing ads that are one minute or maybe plus where we actually give the user the option to skip. But fundamentally what I see is that we are, what we've seen do work well for us is just like anyone else, make sure the brand is at the heart of the story. But also the difference is, is that we're not pushing or forcing advertisers to work within a two to three to five second window. We're actually saying that you can actually have 30 seconds to tell your story. Okay. I think those are, those are also there. We're actually releasing something with the mobile marketing association in the next couple of days or so, which is basically a creative playbook to OTTs. Um, and that's something that we are basically going to do. I think the other tendency that we have, it, we've seen is people tend to under invest on the frequency one or two times is, is considered good enough. I think what we've seen is that most advertisers and users need to see five or six times for it to stick in their head. Okay. I mean, how many ads are you exposed to? If you see it once, will you remember two, three, four, five times, I think becomes a more interesting conversation uh, the ability to, do. and we've done some work on that. All right. Uh, one very interesting question. Um, how is OTD advertising priced? How does pricing for uh, OTT differ from traditional advertising? And there is one more in that saying, how often do we suggest uh, to optimize the OTT advertising campaign? Okay, so let me answer the first question. I think for, for those of you, mostly television is bought on a spot basis. 
and the spot price varies between the kind of content, the kind of channel, the timing potential, um, and who the advertiser is. Okay, at least in Hotstar, we offer more traditional like television uh, digital buying opportunities. So we have a CPM basis, uh, we have frequency caps. Okay, we do offer you know a cost per day on our billboard, for example, which is a, a master that allows you to reach everyone who comes to Hotstar in the day. But fundamentally, what you're trying to do, and we, we think this works, is you're trying to reach a member of the audience X times, two, three, five times over a certain period of time. And what we found out is that if I want to reach 100,000 people five, five times, on average, that's 500,000 impressions that we run and we serve. Okay. And I think that's kind of how we operate today. I think while television works quite well, they have a certain amount of history that talks about if I buy a spot on this channel at this time, this is the average reach I will get. Um, and then obviously you, you layer in pieces like targeting and you know exclusions and the length of the video that you want to do and the length of the creative and, and it changes the basis of that. So it's much more in common with digital buying than it is with television buying. Got it. And, and how do you optimize it? I think optimize is uh, a couple of things. Obviously, there are users who click on ads and come to your site. Okay, there are pre and post shows, uh, pre and post BLS surveys. That we do. We also work with our clients a lot to help them optimize and think of what the right thing to do. Typically, what we'll come back to you with is say, what we've seen is this audience X type is responding to your ads much more than audience B. And is that something that we can learn from? Those are the kind of ideas that we have. Okay. How's programmatic advertising on OT platform going to be impact the marketing activities by business? Okay. If, I, if I'm hearing that question is, Number one, can you buy programmatic? Can you yeah. buy video on programmatically? Yeah. Yes, you can. I think we have certain partnerships that we're looking at um, where we allow advertisers to buy um, Hotstar inventory programmatically. I think that it's not a carte blanche in the sense that not every piece of content is open for it. Okay, I'll give you an example. So we do a lot of live sports, okay? And we typically have hit, I think we've hit the, the the, the top eight most streamed events are all been a hot star, okay? Where from anything, anything above 10 million has been all hot star. And we have up to about 25 million users confirmed at one point in time. Now, there is not one advertiser platform in the world that can support streaming to 25 million people in a minute or in a second and run ads on that basis or programmatically. Because imagine that we've all seen the experience when I press play and it takes a second, two seconds, three seconds to, to, to load. Imagine that's happening when you're watching a cricket game and you know, the ball is about to come up and the player is about to hit and then the ad comes up, okay? That's typically what we do. So the, the time frequency is so, is so short that it's, it's not really there. I think the other thing that you miss out on while programming can help you with reaching frequency, we do a lot of shows with integrations. In fact, we're doing one, I think it's going to launch in the next week or so, uh, are built uh, around, um, you know, kind of a reality singing show and a dancing show, okay? All of those things we can do at a relatively reasonable cost compared to, you know, TV. And those are things you can't do programmatically. So we have solutions like influencers that you can't do, you know, by programmatically, but it's there within a certain con constraints. Got it. Uh, there's one question is like, uh, the, will the OTT platform work on a niche audience or one OTT platform will try to cover all the different audience. Basically the question is like an XYZ OTT brand stands for sports, someone stands for original, someone stands for uh, entertainment content or something. Uh, it's a good question. I don't, I think we're in very early days of the OTT space right now. I, today, I think we're beginning to see that some OTTs um, are focusing on specific areas. I think the market that was still, I mean, I think Hotstar still looks at us and says, we look at the market and say, look, what's our value? We think that we'll be one of the largest OTTs. We are the largest OTT in India right now. But we know that in the area of sports, we are, think we have a strong differentiation between exclusive events where people come to us. And I think, you know, with the launch of Disney Plus as a brand, um, Disney Plus Hotstar, we think that we can differentiate ourselves on the basis of family-friendly children's content, okay? And that I think is something that we're building out. Um, I think it's still relatively early days in terms of 
people's ability to say uniqueness. Am I unique? Uh, is a unique content that people come to me for? And my only view upon that, it's a personal view, it's not, a, it's not an official view, is that at the last count, I think there were more than 170 OTTs in the market, okay? Most users typically watch between two to three apps a month, okay? I think everyone's focusing on trying to be in that top two to three or maybe even five apps, okay? In that case, it's very hard to be a niche player. Uh, phones in India are still relatively less um, well off or less, uh, not even well off, honestly, less, uh, have less specifications than phones in, in the West, for example. So RAM is an issue, memory size is an issue, less of an issue than it was two or three years ago. But still, I think people want to focus on two to three. And if you're focusing on being on two to three, you know, video apps, we want to be part of those. All right. Uh, the other question is, will we see more and more regional language content too, or it will be more focused to only urban population? So today in India, uh, in Hotstar, more than 40% of our watch time is non-English, non-Hindi. Okay. Actually, our biggest entertainment show is um, on, in Hotstar is Big Boss Tamil. Okay. And we've had people, we, I think we delivered nearly a billion votes on our app in the last season. So I already think that anyway, India is a multilingual country. Okay. And it's only going to grow over time. Okay. So uh, the other question is, uh, do Indian users have really started paying for ad free experience? That is one of the questions I'm sure you'll be getting a lot, right? Because in India, a friend will take it and give it to five friends to use it. So in terms of subscription base, are we still mm. ready to pay for it or we just expect free mail? free? You know, um, you know, I was watching my, uh, when I was his, uh, Uday speak at, uh, at an event and he said, it used to be that 20, 30 years ago, television was free. And, uh, now most of 90% of television is actually paid for and there are advertising. Okay. I think that India is reaching this inflection stage where people are willing to pay for premium content and content that makes what they're passionate about. Not everyone, but it's a habit I think that we're building. Yeah. And it's also a way to understand um, how to, um, it's, it's, it's a way to get the kind of content you like. So I'll give you an example. If I am building a, a show that's going to be mostly advertiser funded, my goal is to get as many people to watch it as possible. Full stop. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I want, if I have a million, why not two million, why not five million, why not 20 million? Okay. Um, if I'm building a subscription funded business or a combination of them both, what I want is to create a program that, you know, must, I must have, I must watch. Yeah. I don't care what else happens, but that one time a month or two times a month, I will be in front of the, the app watching this show. Uh, a good example would be Game of Thrones. Okay. Or cricket. Okay. I think there are people who are passionate about those kind of shows and they will watch it. I think that's what we've seen. And I also think that frankly speaking, uh, subscription is not a very expensive effort compared to the alternatives that people have in, term, in terms of use. If, if I was using an app four hours a day, um, which is what, you know, 20 hours a month, um, I mean, almost 240 days. Basically, it's about almost 10 days of in a year spent watching an app, or at least in Hossa, the numbers that we see. Okay. Um, for the cost of 400 rupees a year, okay, I have access to most of that content, including live cricket. I think the, the value proposition is pretty strong. Interesting. One very interesting question. Will we see more of investment in AI and machine learning to enable technology-led content? which will be useful for advertisers and make it more interactive for the end user too? Um, it's a good question. I think a lot of it depends on the context. So I'm asking the advertising question first, as opposed to the content piece. Oh, yeah. So um, the theory is, is that, you know, what can AI help me do? AI can potentially help me target better, potentially help me create more different variations of my ads. Okay, and potentially offer more options and technology that the user can take an action. Okay, I can fill up a, a form, I can ask to be called, 
all those kind of activities. I think those are always going to be there. Okay. Um, it's possible that we thought about this, you know, recipes. Okay. Do we start recommending recipes to people who are more likely to, to eat them because they're vegetarian or non-vegetarian or in a certain part of the country where they traditionally have different kinds of food? Okay. I think that's there. From a marketing perspective, I would suggest that you have to have an ad that has some kind of creative action or call to action, okay? Um, or something that you can do because that's how you get double the, double the whammy. You have to reach people in a uh, certain frequency. You want them to know what to do. And I think that's going to be important. Sure. So, uh, Gulshan, one, my, I have one question is, um, obviously we are reading a lot of reports saying that by 2023, 24, digital is going to be number one in terms of the X terms of the X. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you see that is the biggest driver is because of the smart TV to a certain extent or what, what's your view? And also my second question is how you are seeing viewers viewing out on a smart TV versus connected on the phone? Um, it's fairly unclear right now. I think, look, today 90% of our user base is on mobile only. Yeah. Okay. So we are definitely a mobile first nation. Okay. Uh, what we've seen is people who watch on connected TVs do watch a lot more than watching on a mobile phone, which makes sense. It's easy for me to sit back and watch something on a large screen than watching something on a, a mobile phone. I think the question becomes people on mobile phone may come more often. It's not, I don't think the answer is really clear versus a connected mm -hmm. TV. Uh, they may watch different kinds of content versus, um, you know, watching on a large screen connected TV. So I think they can both coexist together. I think what from a consumer perspective is super interesting is I watch something on my commute to the office or on the bus or whatever. Okay. Then I pick up that show in the evening when I'm watching with my uh, friends and when I'm watching with my family on a large screen. Or actually maybe the, maybe the opportunity is very different. Maybe I watch my family friendly programs in the afternoon or in the evening and then I watch it at a different time. So um, we haven't yet seen the interplay of um, television and mobile today. But I think the idea that, I think when we're thinking about it is the idea that you can suddenly say, watch a show on one device, come into a different room, continue watching that same show on a different device, seamlessly. Or for example, we started using voice technology. So you can say, you know, Hotstar, play me X show. Okay, that opens up a lot of interesting opportunities. Yeah. Uh, so one question is, how do you manage uh, objections handling when clients looked at performance for OTT? So more of higher CTRs, better ECTLs versus higher VTRs, right? Video through rates and all. Um, look, I think the video market and the video app, I look at the online video market and say, look, there's video played on, on television, there's video played on, um, on online. And they pretty much fulfill the same function. I don't think that, and I'm just using a personal example. If I'm watching cricket and I'm watching the final over of an IPL match, I'm very unlikely to click out of that. And, um, you know, for example, um, go buy something or go download something. Okay. It's all about the right context, but we do know that it builds results for us. Okay. Um, you know, we have a case of study with uh, Seat Tires that in the summer of 2019, pretty much spent their entire marketing budget, digital marketing budget on Hotstar. And what they saw was even though the number of clicks didn't go to the website, okay, they actually saw that direct visits to their website went up by 40%. Okay, leads went up a lot. So I don't remember that number, so just forgive me. But there was a huge increase in the number of people spending time on the website, the number of people directly visiting the website, and ultimately filling out and saying, I want to buy tires. Okay. Now I think the question is, is that the viewers has always historically been a view that I clicked on something and then I did some, I did something on the website. I think that one of the benefits of using programmatic or a more analytical approach is that people don't have just one influence. People don't have a linear journey. I don't see an ad. I don't click on it. And then I don't buy. I typically see an ad. Then I act on it. It impacts my search share. It impacts my activity It impacts my trust. All of those things make a big difference. But um, I think with performance, everybody wants performance. My question is, what is performance? Um, because what we've seen is 
if I've seen an ad and I've watched it enough times, we know that impacts your mind, your mind measure. Yes. Why is online video, why is video such a big part of the advertising market today? Because telling a story to an audience over 30 seconds has worked. It doesn't change just because you choose to put it online and you shouldn't measure it only by the number of users who click. Oh. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Uh, is OTD advertising in India is customized person to person using OTT? Uh, do you mind repeating that? Is OTT? Is OTT advertising in India is customized person to person using cookie? Um, so cookies, as far as I understand right now, is mostly on the way out. I think Chrome have announced that uh, they'll stop supporting cookies. Okay. Um, we are mostly an app-based device. So we don't really use cookies for that, for that kind of piece, okay, uh, to target because it's not really relevant to us. I think the good news is that the large chunk of our watch time are by users who are logged in, either with a phone number or an email address or they paid for it. So we don't have a good idea who they are. And so, you know, do we optimize advertising to drive um, consumer? Yes. Nobody wants to see the same ad four or five times. Okay, so there's frequency caps, there's targeting, all those things that we do. Um, I think historically we haven't focused on um, a custom show because we believe that the advertiser has a sense of who the audience was and then we'll optimize basis that. Uh, this is one very interesting question. It says, uh, in the future, can we see OTT collaborating and creating a combined package so that you don't need to buy each and every OTT separately? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, that'd be interesting. I think, you know, programmatic is probably the right way to think of that solution. Yeah. Okay. I think, but I think even within that, there's different kinds of video. And to be honest, I mean, cricket costs a lot, you know, movies cost a lot, okay? And I say, well, definitely a lot more than funny cat videos, okay? And so the cost, and that would be there. I think, you know, we're still trying to work through in this very early days of what is this. They, you can buy most most OTTs in one place, I believe. Not, not, not just, but I just think you just have to, but not through your traditional place. Not, you can't, there's not one interface, except on programmatic today. Yeah. One very I'm, not, I'm not all, I'm not, and frankly, we're not, I acknowledge we're not on all programmatic platforms. Okay. okay, so uh, how's the plan? How's your plan to reach out to the SMB market? It's a very interesting question. The reason is because SMB market is the one who has tons of money. From a big brands, obviously, you cannot grow 100% on 100% year on year. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of SMB brands who have tons of money, but they are really not out there. Because when you talk to them about advertising on OTT, what really shocks them saying, oh, it's video, I'm not too sure because it costs a lot. But at the same time, how you get them on board? Because they have lots and lots of money to spend. Yeah, and we have we actually created a dedicated SMB team uh, to focus on that. So you can buy Hotstar online. We have a telesales team. Um, we traditionally went to Hotstar to look. Um, so the top, the way that television is really thought of is, I think the top fifty drive two thirds of all television advertising brands or not brands, market, uh, companies. And then I think if you go to the top three hundred and fifty. It's something like 90% of all addicts, okay? But I think what has always been interesting is that, you know, we have a world where we have potentially a crore plus SMBs, okay? Yeah. And historically, SMBs have always gone into search or social media. But I think there's a strong opportunity to reach that, or that audience over time, okay, on OTTs. I think what we haven't really seen is a way to be able for, for OTTs, uh, for SMBs to be able to build uh, TV campaigns very quickly and easily, and for them to see the difference that uh, it makes their business. And that'll take time, I suspect. Go and on. I think the, 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 view, the value is, is that they'll also be able to target as well. So you get the benefits of TV and you get the benefits of digital. So we've got a lot of questions, but I know we are short of time. It's already what? Uh, 3.25. <clears throat> Maybe one or two questions, Matt, and then we will end it. Uh, just give me a second. I'll just pick someone. Okay, here it is. It says, are people investing in customers, custom solutions and innovations during this time? Or is it just a normal ads that they are, they can take to multiple platforms? Um, I think... Interesting, right? Because it is. 
are we really using the the platform though less clutter in a right way or just putting the advertising which you see it's easily available put it on the ot i think the vast majority of you of of brands are typically taking the television com, uh, campaign and running it on you know digital so forget frankly ott or online video people are running the same creative all the way through i do think that there are some clients who are now starting to create like very customized creative i think the kellogg's influence piece was actually pretty interesting which is an idea that we've come up with shot and actually the same creative was done in multiple languages okay with different influencers who are relevant to that part of it okay um so i think those have been done but i don't think it's is it business as normal no it's definitely not but it should be okay uh maybe can do uh, one one two more max uh, post covid will we see an increase in the advertising budget on ott that's a very post-COVID. interesting right? because right now post covid will you see the increase in advertising because right now the numbers has gone up everybody is at home don't know what to do and that's exactly the reason they are all online either on mobile phone or smartphones or tv i think look i think the good news is our watch time has increased significantly yeah. okay um we also have our own issues as well in terms of producing content uh sports shows have been cancelled some of our productions we've not been able to do um i think the covid time is an interesting example but i think if you look at forget this month or next month or last month if you look over a six month or one year period or even a two year period i'll say in most periods i will say more advertisers will spend more more of their budgets on video platforms okay than they did in the previous year okay um now whether that goes on to hotstar or something else i you know hopefully that's my job okay but i do see that there's a very strong consumer value proposition that we have as disney plus hot stuff for our user base i think there's also a very strong um advertiser proposition that we've kind of built okay and we think that long term this could be a very very big market for us oh yeah and do you see the programmatic side of the business making a bigger pie over a period of time i think a large part of of the reach and frequency game on advertising will become more and more automated okay um and that doesn't mean that it's uh, a bad thing for publishers okay it means that you're chasing a specific um user i think the question will become is that there's some brands that will want to be on news as an example or some brands that will want to be on you know comedy or sports i think those we will see more and more choices can happen Perfect. Uh, will you be okay to take one more because we are already twenty sure. eight, and then uh, we'll end it uh, because we have a lot of questions. But maybe we'll take one more, which says if users are shifting to connected TV and media mm-hmm. buying is happening digitally, how would it impact the traditional way of media buying? Look, I think that most the value of television today, a traditional media buying, is that we all operate off one platform, yeah. Bark, that uh, tells us. this ad was seen this is the reach this is grp i think and so there's a huge amount of trust in that okay um i think online video today still doesn't have the uh, measurability or the transfer across all players okay to uh, compare to tv you know if i choose to watch you know if i'm a media buyer it doesn't really matter which television channel they're all on the same platform Okay today that's not the case in digital. I think today our goal is to have anyone who advertises on um television should be considered an OTT advertiser and frankly a lot of SMBs and small businesses who can't afford to reach television should also be on OTT as well. Completely agree. I cannot agree more. I you are bang on. So there are so many advertisers who has amazing opportunity mm-hmm. who cannot afford television OTT is obviously the way to go for them and reach out to a larger audience. Okay so that that takes us to 330 Gulshan I mean I don't want to take much of your time thank you so, so much, much for your time it's and a- really had any great insights about OTT and I'm sure you can we can share this uh, PPT then I Yes can you can you can get a PDF file you can share it so brilliant so I'll send I will send across to all the people who are attending mm-hmm. and thank you all the attendees for joining this webinar thanks again thanks thank for you. the thank you bye take care bye.